Hello! Okay, so I'm recording this at the very end of the day, and if you've come over from the main channel, it's because you just watched the 10 minute, 1 minute, 10 second art challenge. I did promise for anyone who came over from the main channel that today is really a bit of a behind the scenes tour of the setup, because those of you who have been following along with the vlog, it's been changing, I've been doing a whole bunch of different things, and then yesterday in particular, uh, I faced a bunch of issues. I didn't make a vlog because it was just so, like... It wasn't a great day. <laughs> I had a whole bunch of stuff break, including a hanging light. My computer was crashing. I had to have a tech person over to come fix it. And then a whole bunch of other stuff. I feel like I'm beating around the bush a lot. I'm just going to turn the camera around and show you the stuff I'm going to be talking about. <laughs> so this is the command center as it appears so far. And those of you who remember the behind the scenes setup of the other studio, this is... Uh, this is a little crazier. <laughs> so there's a lot to get through and I'm going to go through this in a lot nicer a way and in a more refined finished setup later on the main channel in a uh, in a studio tour. Uh, but I think um, some of you might be curious as to how things have come along and what are refined. So I'm just going to go sort of from the back to the front of this section just to show you what I'm trying to, es to establish with my uh, talk to camera and art filming setup. So I'll start off with the background. Really what I'm finding is I need a really consistently lit background in all of my videos and without needing to move the light. So I've uh, positioned these two to light the backdrop in a, in a fairly even nice way. And in theory, I'm not really gonna ever need to move them very much unless I need them for other shoots or, or sections. So they're gonna stay there for the most part. Then we move over here to this ridiculous contraption, which is the crane. Now I previously had my talk to camera camera set up on the crane in the old studio, whereas now this is my top down camera. And you'll notice there's a few funky things going on here. One, I have a little monitor and I actually, if I grab, let's grab something like this with a whole bunch of lines on it. See how it looks all green. How funny is that? Why is that happening? And then why in this video, is it all clean? Well, the reason is every time I come up here, I need to focus. So I grab the focus part and as I shift it, that is called focus assist lines. So they appear really sharp and bright when something has a, a sharp edge, which lets you know when it's in focus. And as you can see, that's a really clean shot. So the idea is when I'm doing a shot, let's say I want to change angle and let's do that right now, actually. I bring the crane down so it's weighted. Right, so, oof, that light's in the way. I really didn't think that through, did I? I've moved the camera to a different angle, right? This one's lower, it's on the side, shows a little bit more under the hand where I'm drawing rather than a top down. But in moving it, it retains the same focus that I had. And rather than looking all the way over there as I shift the ring and try and find the focus and it's not actually really clear, sometimes it's even harder to see, but this one's a pretty easy one to focus without the focus things anyway. Um, but in this situation in particular, it's just super, super easy. And you can actually see it sort of shifting up and down because it, we're getting closer and further away. So the focus is moving towards and away from you. So let's say I want to have it like the focus like right there in the front section so that where my hand is doesn't really need to be in focus, but what I'm drawing is in focus. So it's like super easy to see. Uh, everything is really sharp there and it's just a really sexy final shot as a result. Like this beats the crap out of the webcam I was using in the old studio. And this lens is amazing because it has a huge zoom distance. So I can go all the way out like that, or I can go all the way in like that and still have quite a bit of distance between what I'm drawing and the camera, which I didn't have the luxury of before. Oof, look at those disgusting nails. I'm trying to quit biting my nails, by the way. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, it gives me a lot of flexibility. I got a tripod head on a tripod head so that I can get a really, really flexible camera position. And then that's all really solid and set up on the crane. So I can just lift it up out of the way or uh, I can do a top down shoot from that high up and still talk to the camera and it's not gonna get in the way. So that's that explained. It's quite intense as you can see, but I've worked really hard to make it as simple and straightforward for me as possible. By the way, how this is getting to the computer is I've got a uh, video cable going into the monitor and then a video cable going out of the monitor into a little converter capture box, which turns it into a HDMI signal, which I run back into the computer's capture card, which brings it into XSplit. So I'll be using that camera and that setup for streams as well. So now on to some of the more 
frontal stuff. I'm going to skip the computer and monitor and mics and all that stuff because I'll probably cover all that later. But I think something that's a little more interesting is actually the talk to camera camera, which I've just refined today. By the way, you'll probably notice this funky little light thing here. I'm not entirely settled on how I'm going to use it, but I know I'm going to need to use it. And it's really cool because it gives me the flexibility to dim it and brighten it or shift the warmth or our coolness of the color quite a bit. The purpose of that is actually to balance the shadows on the paper. Uh, so you'll notice, especially if I turn this thing off, it's actually quite a heavy shadow there. So if I just switch this on, it, it softens it quite a bit and I'm, I'm just trying to disperse the amount of shadows and soften their intensity. So there's a lot of thought and work going into making the picture in these videos a thousand times better than they have been. And then also, easy to go back to because as you guys know I like I jump to different video ideas and do some crazy weird stuff every now and then but I need to come back to the basics regularly and quickly so that's what I'm trying to accomplish the cool thing about this crane setup is it's really like really flexible so this will be cool for the top-down drawing stuff but also if I'm doing just like anything sculpture or whatever this is still the perfect camera for the, the activity focused stuff. So now onto what's happening here. So this is a little bit different because I actually had a different lens. It was a big fat zoomy zoomy lens that I actually had up here when I had that mounted on the ceiling. Those of you who remember me going through that, uh, I actually returned that. Uh, I didn't get a full return because I lost the box. So I sold it for a loss. <laughs> but replaced it with this lens, which is what's called a prime lens. And this is the first time I've had a prime lens. And that means that this thing doesn't actually zoom. This is a, an unmoving 17 millimeter and it focuses. But the, the, the value of that is that it has a really, really low uh, aperture or f-stop or whatever you call it, meaning it lets in a lot of light, meaning you get a nice creamy, buttery, blurry background with a lens like this. And the picture quality on this is really, really nice. So I've got the same setup as far as the focus peaking goes. That's what that's called. Um, when, let me say I want to focus on my phone here, I can do the focus and you'll see, there you go. There's the sharp green. And now I know my phone's in focus. If I hold that there, the phone's in focus. So if I want to be in focus myself, Sort of hard to do this while I'm holding the vlog. Just gonna rough it out. I mean, you guys can't really see it very clearly, but the outcome is basically that I have a really, really clean image for the front camera. And the other thing worth noting is it's mounting. Uh, I've actually mounted it on. Let me show you here. This is uh, mounted onto the desk with a clamp, onto a spigot, and got a weight down here just to counterbalance it so that I can lean it in a different direction and it's not gonna go wonky or anything. So that's running out to that and I'm actually recording that on that device there. Now the thing I love about this setup the most is that when I wanna film in front of this set, or let's say in front of a backdrop or whatever, it really is just a matter of moving, like rotating the whole desk to be here and moving this light because I actually plan on mounting two of the soft box, box lights up here. So they're permanently set to light this set. So I don't have to move any of those lights. So the theory is to, to move to this set, I just move the desk, move, like rotate that light and I'm good to go. So I'm working really, really hard to make future content creation like roll really smoothly. But the reason it's not been smooth right now is because it's taking a lot of work to get to that point, but I'm so close, I can feel it. And the last few days have been really frustrating and vlogs have been intermittent because like, as I, as you saw in my not great day vlog, a couple of vlogs ago, it's been pretty tough. There have been some real curveballs thrown around and then yesterday was pretty bad as well, as far as equipment breaking and then also the setup being really convoluted. So I actually spent all of today getting equipment, sorting things out, setting things up really cleanly. And I recorded the, the video that went up on the main channel in half an hour. PJ is staying late to edit it so we can get it out to you guys today. So we're, we're working really hard to get, so we can get something to you today because I feel bad about how inconsistent content has been. Um, but we're really nearly there. And this has really energized me. I'm feeling really excited about this. So that's pretty much it. I think that's, um, I think that covers where I'm at right now, I know it's taken a lot of patience for you guys to, uh, to, for me to get to this point, but I'm really hoping that this little behind the scenes has been interesting for you. And, uh, I'm, I'm really excited. Like, 
I hope you, you get the feel from like seeing how all this stuff is working that this is really going to be a totally like new feel. Like it's going to be the same channel. It's going to be the same form of presentation and video style and all this stuff, but it's just going to be so crisp. It's going to be really nice. It's just, yeah, we're getting there. Anyways, I think that'll do for the vlog. I'm going to do a question of the day because I owe you guys that. LN says, how much is Mrs. Jazza involved in content? You mentioned a few times that she had ideas that you incorporated in videos. Has there ever been a situation where you didn't go do a video because she convinced you it was a bad idea? Yes and yes. Mrs. Jazza is like part of the entire pulse and heartbeat of this channel. We're very much a complete partnership and each other's halves. I couldn't do what I do without her and her support. And of course, you know, I'm making all the crap and difficult things to deal with for her to deal with. So I guess technically she couldn't do that without me making that to deal with. Um, in answer to your question, uh, as far as ideas, Basically, I bring every video idea to her and we just sort of rough it out it. and it's a really easy flow generally. She'll have a few inputs or, or sometimes she'll like have a suggestion that'll make us both laugh and it might change the direction of the video. In general, that's, it's a pretty straightforward thing and then sometimes I'll just sort of do a video and run it by her after I've made it or when I'm about to release it and it's, it's pretty easy going. Sometimes I'll be more confident in an idea and I'll just go ahead with it. Sometimes I'll know it needs refining, we work on it together. Sometimes I don't know how to make something work and she helps me shape it um, and often in those situations I don't believe in the concept until until she helps me work through it and then I start making it and then it works amazingly um, the video I did with her making a Pictionary thing that worked out really well and that was all her idea um, there's there's quite a few I can't think of more on the top of my head but there's a lot of concepts and actually she did this amazing thing where uh, she bought like 12 videos worth of different art materials from like pipe cleaners to like to like iron beads that melt and blah blah and they're all like a whole bunch of videos I'm looking forward to getting to when all of this is set up so there's a whole bunch of stuff like that where she really understands I think her perspective that I find really valuable is she doesn't do what I do as far as drawing and painting and the creative stuff goes but she she understands the appeal for people who don't do it so she, her, the, a perspective she brings really well is what's really watchable to people who aren't professionals or necessarily creatives in the same way that doesn't mean that those people don't like watching an artwork be made or the themes that I sometimes work with on the channel so that's a perspective I find really really valuable because she'll say hey like you know doing an artwork with makeup is a great idea that's going to be really fun to watch and I'll do that now I think there's a video that she suggested and it turned out amazing so I think that that's the sort of dynamic I hope that it's, it's a bit hard to describe but it's all encompassing <laughs> so I hope that answers your question I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the setup this is pretty crazy doesn't that look crazy? I love how crazy it looks. The more techie, the more boom arms there are, the more happy I am. I feel like I need another boom arm. I do need another boom arm because I used the boom arm for my vlog on this. So I just had to answer the question of the day with my arm and my arm is sore now. Oh, I get to buy another boom arm. I definitely need another boom arm. <laughs> I think on a technical, uh, particularly hardware level, we're really nearly there. There's a lot of fine tuning stuff that's gonna take a lot longer uh, from organizing some of the boxes and stuff that I need to pack in different spaces to particularly the stream setup. And a lot of you have been asking when I'm gonna start streaming again. To be frank, it's probably gonna be two or three weeks at least because aside from making content, I need to find a couple of complete days where I'm not doing anything but setting up this computer is not set up. Like I need to install all the programs and get all the stream stuff set up and all the different screens and blah, blah, blah. I need to refine the lighting and the go-to way of filming top-down cameras because I'm not totally happy with that yet. But it's in a place where I can start making content and figure a lot of that out as I go. And then with a few solid days between here and the next month, we'll be will be established and it really is going to come together very fast as it has been in the last few days there's been a lot of trials but we're we're getting there oh there is one last question that i had to address which i saw in the comments and that is hey jazza what's up with the makeup that they saw on the desk okay uh i, I can't really show you because i turned off the main lines but i have a shiny forehead and a big forehead and the purpose of this is it's a matte powder and you put it on just like that <laughs> <laughs> and it essentially means you don't have a bloody shiny forehead so that people stop staring at it and leaving comments in your video saying your forehead is brighter than my future. 
That's one I got a lot. Don't get that anymore because we're the matte powder. Isn't that nice and soft? Plus, we look fabulous. Yeah, it looks fierce. <laughs> so, bye.